But one of the big questions for last time that I feel like I didn't answer very well was the overall setup here at the studio, how everything interfaces, kind of what the order is, and generally how I make everything work together. So this time, we've got two cool things. One, we have capabilities of getting the actual screen. We got the good old 2009 cheese grater talking to the switch. So we'll be able to show a little bit of that, but I also made a few graphics uh, on the overall setup. So should we just dive in? Yeah, any, let's do that. Any questions out of the gates? Uh, not really. Um, just what up and everything sounds good. So what great. Up? Cool. So this is, we're talking mix setup here about how everything comes back in, but it's very similar to if I was tracking, because I always monitor analog when I'm tracking because it's faster, uh, more fun, and I think it sounds better. So it starts with coming out of Logic. We have 64 available outputs from the Motus, two 24 IOs and a pair of 2408s. So when I want something to show up on the console, let's say the kick drum, if I want it to show up on channel one, all I do is set my output to channel one. If I want snare on channel two, I set output to channel two. I've I have this part set up so there's as little patching as possible. So it goes Logic, goes to the Motus, everything is in the patch bay. So all of the outputs of the console, all of the ins and the outs of the I.O. are all inside the patch bay. It's all half normal, so there's no patching necessary. I set it up very logically, but it's there in case we do need to route something somewhere else, which happens occasionally. Since it's all in the patch bay, we can do that real easily. When it comes out of the patch bay, one-to-one, -one, comes over to the monitor inputs on the console. So in mix mode, like we are right now, I use the fader flip on the channel. It's two buttons at the top. Here, um, can you go in You want to go to the, to the other uh, camera? Eh, I don't know if you can change the picture in picture that easily, though. No, okay. But well. real, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. But at the top of the console up here is my fader reverse. So... I'm directly feeding the monitor inputs, partially because when I track, that way I, I've got the console in line at that point. So it's going in one, coming out one. And it comes back up, so a kick on one, monitor the kick on one. So when I'm mixing, I just use the fader flip on the top of the console that sends everything down to the faders. I can still use these monitor sections, which we'll get to in a minute. But that allows me to not have to patch anything whatsoever. It's just a fader flip on the top, boom, all I can up to all 32 channels right away at my fingertips. That's the basic flow of getting channels out of the DAW and onto the board. You want to go to that second graphic now? There we go. Here's the, all, where all the different integration can happen. First off is the channel inserts up at the top of the console. That's the obvious, right? Say you got a vocal, you want to put a compressor on it. You know, your bass, you want to put a compressor on it. You know, whatever. That's the first point that I can bring in any of the outboard gear. The second point is the buses. And this isn't necessarily in this order. I just did this to make it a little easier to walk through here. I can step everything over and put anything on these buses. It could just be grouping things together. But for instance, this mix, I'm using four stereo buses. I have a stereo drum bus. I have my stereo drum parallel compression. I have stereo guitar parallel saturation. And I have the vocal bus that all the vocals go through and it has the 5043 on it. That's how I'm using the buses right now. If I was tracking, I commonly take all my kick drums, like to my inside and outside. It'll come over here to one bus, I'll sum it to one channel. I'll use that a lot of the times with the top snare mics as well. But in this case, for mix sense, mix case, that's where I'm inserting some effects. So on the drum bus, I have the 551 into the 535s and then into the Royal Blues. So anything going to this first drum bus, that's the chain. The parallel compression is the Comp 54s. The guitar parallel saturation is the TPS. And I already said the vocal bus is the Rupert Neve 5043, and then a little bit of Trident EQ. All of that gets assigned at the top of the console, which I think most consoles all have it. SSL mm -hmm. Neve, everybody's got the, the, the assignments for the buses up at the top, or most anyway. Most of the big boys. That's how that gets assigned. My third option 
is the all the oxens on the board. This can get used a lot of the times it's sending to outboard effects, delays, reverbs, which I'm pretty sure today's mix, that's all that is happening from the oxes. Sometimes that'll go to the, uh, the radial ecstasies with some, maybe a overdrive pedal or something on it for some drums. And then we can easily feed anything we need really with those oxens. You've got two stereo and there's four monos. After that, a lot of this returns coming back up. It's going to be one of two places. The main spot is the effects returns on the board. There's, there's eight stereo effects returns. That's, today, that's where all our reverbs that we're using outboard, which happens to be the M3000, TC M3000, the TCD2, and the good old Alesis MIDI verb. They're coming back up here on the stereo returns. There's also some in-the-box effects. Stereo effects return seven is always my in-the-box returns. So any effects that may be coming from vocals, or in this case, we have guitar, right? We did a little bit of guitar. We have some vocal effects that are coming from inside the box. That's all gonna feed out to that stereo bus. That is coming out of Motu output 33 and 34. So my first stereo, stereo output past the console, past 32, is always my in-the-box effects send, or returns in this case, coming out to the board. Most of the time, channel eight on the effects return is my drum parallel compression return. That is the one thing since everything went back in that I have not completely got hooked back up yet. So right now I'm just using bus three and four for that. Now, if we have something that's a little on the noisy side, like say the quad reverbs, the, of all the units in the rack over here, the quad reverbs are the noisiest. If you saw last week's live stream when we did Jingle Bell Rock, down here on channel 31 and 32, we had the return for the quad reverb. We were only using that on the guitar solo. So this allowed us to mute that before the guitar solo and mute it right after with some, with some automation. And that way we didn't have the excess noise. There's enough analog stuff happening here. A little bit of hiss everywhere. The quad reverbs are kind of like airplane hiss. <laughs> <laughs> or you know those noise generators when you need to sleep? Oh, just turn your quad reverbs on. You'll be asleep like a baby in minutes. So if, the, if I'm not using those channels, I would put them somewhere down here at the end of the console and just have fader automation on and off. Prior to the fader automation, I would have it come back somewhere up here and I would do it just, you know, manually myself. Sometimes I would, you know, do it with the dial. Sometimes I would just literally mute it. If it was in the middle of the song, I would just mute it. If it was at the end of the song, I would actually do a manual fade out just so it sounded natural and you didn't all of a sudden have and a sharp cutoff. But for this case, we don't, we're not using the quad reverb today. We don't have any of the noisy, noisy effects going, so they're just coming wide open, being fed from the aux ends here. Now, I could also send out from in the box, which we'll get to in a second. So let's go, first next off, one. real quick, cut over to seven. Let's see if we have any questions there before we go to this next stage. Oh no, here. <laughs> Question, where do, where you do the automation, ha <laughs> ha. Well, we're gonna get to that in just a second. But I can actually show you today because this monitor is hooked up. <laughs> yeah. All right, cut back over to camera trace. I got you. There, there we are. Go. Okay, go to the next graphic. We got one more. Okay, so here's the print chain. And this is how everything gets to the computer that's it's over here that you're actually hearing, or you will hear the audio from. Master fader. The blue fader on the console, I do not have the inserts hooked up. I don't use them. Uh, this is a send to go into the master bus that's over to my left. This directly sends to the C1. All of the C1, the Rupert Neve 542, and the SSL Ultraviolet are all hardwired. One to the next. So it goes through that chain. It comes out of that chain to the Apogee. Rosetta 200, the Apogee is hooked up to the print laptop, comes back out of the print laptop once again to the Apogee. Everybody knows how I.O. works, hopefully. And that comes back up to the board up here on the main, on the master channel. And that is the two track return. So all I have to do to hear what's going on over there is simply hit that two track. And we are monitoring after all of this is happening. Anything that's in the box, Anything that's out in the analog domain, we are now hearing all of that stuff. So that's our monitor. 
it's the same thing when I'm tracking. The only difference is on the Apogee, you just have to put it in analog in, analog out. And then while we're tracking, I can turn that on and we're monitoring through the mix bus chain and tracking too, which makes it sound a bit more exciting. And then it's easy to turn it off. If you simply turn that two track return off, we're just hearing what's coming out of the master channel. And that is pretty much, that's the ins, the basic ins and outs of this whole setup. It's how we get out of the DAW, it's the spots that I integrate any of the outboard stuff that we have going and the print chain. So now let's go ahead and show this. Let's show the, the setup here in Logic. Okay, so we're going to, uh, to three, right? camera two. Two. Yep, and you can turn the PIP off. So take it off air. There we go. Okay, so now these first 32 channels you can see starting here with the kick and going down here to the guitar effects print return, which this was from last, this is my setup from last week I just imported in here. We're not actually using that this week. So it is not that, there is nothing actually there, but those 32 channels, which are right here, this is what is talking to the console. So this is where all the automation happens. You can see there's a little on the kick, some on the toms, the bass, guitars. We have less automation this week, actually. The piano's getting a tiny bit of auto automation. But this, this is the setup that is exactly what's out here on the console. Actually, turn the picture and picture back on. I think there's room up there in the top. If you would, sir. Ah, there we go. Sweet. Excellent. So you can see that it's a mirror image, basically, of what's in Logic. This needs to make sense. Let's go over here real quick. Right here we have the kick. These two channels, you can see it's going to bus 33. It's only bus 33 because I didn't start this session from scratch. Usually that would be bus one. But this time I decided to leave some stuff on from the last session to see if I liked it. It made my life a living hell. Uh, both of us yesterday tried to go <laughs> through this stuff. So usually bus 33 would be bus one. But in this case, Logic has auxes and banks of 32. So I'm starting at the beginning of the second bank. But 33 is actually over here. That is bus one. So that is set to no output. I'm doing the send out to the board up here. This fader is only affecting anything that's happening post outboard processing. So that's, that, that's how the, that logic and the board are connected together right now. Yeah, John, John is asking, do you consider this a typical hybrid setup as far as routing goes, or is it very specific to your preferences? I'm gonna have to roll with specific, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think what's, what's typical is the separate print uh, system. I think that's typical. That, that's, that that's happens typical. a lot, yeah. yeah. But yeah, in terms of how you're routing, you know, ins and outs, to say, yeah, this is very specific because of the hardware we have. Right. Yeah. Because your setup at home is a little different. Yeah. You use the I.O. plugin, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right? Yeah, mostly. But uh, I, I do also print through when, when I, I don't care about latency. Like out, out of the interface, and then back into the interface. So without uh, going, you know, I.O. plugin. So if you're doing anything that's inside a session, your hookup is in your patch bay, it's just you select whatever ins and outs that yeah. mm -hmm. gear's on, and then it's I.O. plug-in. Yeah. If you're mastering or something, you might yeah. be printing the other way. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes sense.